Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Let's talk about what happened in Brooklyn between Miguel Cotto and Daniel Gill. Now, full disclosure, I saw the fight with a Miguel Cotto crowd, right? Understand, while I'm here online and I'll talk up other fighters, right? Here in Northern California, many of the people I know who are into boxing are Miguel Cotto fans and Saul Alvarez fans. Now, what I'm going to say is going to sound critical of fighters, but just understand we all have strengths and weaknesses, right? Many of you write with the same hand, throw with the same hand. Most of us, I would say, have dominant hands. Understand, in the sport of boxing, it's not uncommon to meet a guy who has really one home run hitting hand, whereas the other hand is just a placeholder, right? What I call here online one-handed fighters, and we're trying to be blunt here because we're trying to beat the casino, and the casino's not going to be subtle with us. Right? What I call one-handed fighters doesn't mean that the guy's not world-class. Doesn't mean that the guy's not a future Hall of Famer. Rather, we're trying to look at strengths and weaknesses and make a decision. Right? We're trying to figure out styles. We're trying to see how the styles mesh. Now, this fight leapt out at me. I was very impressed with Cotto, very impressed with Cotto. I was very disappointed, very, with Daniel Gill, right? The left hook that hits Gill, that drops him the first time in the fight, Gill is unprepared for. Cotto doesn't slip the punch in. The punch lands flush. Now, I have no idea how anyone could fight Miguel Cotto and be unprepared for Miguel's left hook because in my opinion that's the best punch Cotto throws since Cotto is predominantly one-handed now full disclosure and I want you to review the film of the fight yourself the crowd I was with thought that Cotto landed a hard right hand before the second knockdown, right? The film is really for your eyes only. In my opinion, that right hand wouldn't have done much but for the softening of the lefts. In other words, if I were a trainer, and I were counseling Cotto's opponent. I would tell the opponent to guard heavily his right side because Cotto is a hook artist, right? And it's predominantly the left hook. Let me say this too. Let's talk about the secret sauce to Miguel Cotto. When Cotto comes in to throw that left, there's a point in his delivery where you don't know whether the left is coming up top or down low. Right? Cotto's lack of height, and it's clear, especially in this fight, that Cotto does better against taller fighters. Right? Throw out the adage of a good big man beats a good little man. Throw out that adage. The one that applies here is styles make fights. Understand Cotto is fighting low. Right? Cotto can fight small. What Freddie Roach has added to his game is Cotto is not up on the ropes against bigger guys. He's more in the middle of the ring and he's keeping you guessing on his entry point. Then when he decides to throw a punch and he winds up and it looks like a wind up to me. There's a moment in the delivery where he's like this. 
right? Just pretend this is Kodo's left hand. I understand it's inverted here. But he's like this. And you don't know, especially if you're a taller guy like Daniel Gill, and you're looking down, you don't know if Kodo is going to follow through to your rib cage and take out your ribs, or if Kodo is going to continue up and hit you in the face. And guys are a bit surprised at the amount of power Kodo has when he delivers the punch, even when it's up top, even when the guy looks like he has a little distance away from Kodo. So what it means is that a shorter guy can bend his body so that he has a hand guarding not only the right side of his body, but also his head. Right? A shorter guy can crouch and can go like this. A guy who fights with a band can crouch and go like this and block Kodo's left hand. Floyd Mayweather against Kodo was able to crouch and go like this and Kodo's punches hit his hand. But a taller guy with a lean who's standing too tall that guy can't block off the right side of his body. So you're going to notice those are the guys that Kodo is able to land that left hook on. Now Kodo before Freddie Roach often found himself at the end of a jab. So Austin Trout, that's an instructive fight because you're going to notice Trout doesn't go to Kodo's body too much. He picks Kodo's head. He's throwing a jab. Kodo has a problem getting past the jab. Freddie Roach has solved that problem. Because now Kodo is no longer staying at the end of a jab. Kodo is moving. Kodo keeps you readjusting. Right? Take a look at the Daniel Gill fight. There's a movement dynamic to Kodo now where Kodo is kind of moving around the ring. You don't know when he's going to strike. You're looking this way, then you're looking this way, then you're looking this way, then Miguel comes back over this way, and Kodo now is off rhythm. In other words, there's a suddenness to when he leaps in. Right? So let me say this, because I believe it's actually profound right let's pick the biggest names because I believe Kodo has an easier time with bigger men I believe Janady Golovkin has an easier time with bigger men then they do guys their own size in other words Kodo would have more of a problem with Floyd Mayweather than someone like Janady Golovkin right then someone like Peter Quillen in my opinion, the Kodo Golovkin fight is too close to call. Right? Simply because Golovkin's a hunter doesn't have the best defense. Right? Kodo is a guy who can fight low, exactly the kind of fighter who would give Golovkin problems. Again, the tape is the Kasim Uma tape. Right? So the point is, if Kodo fights slow and hovers, stays away from the ropes, keeps it in the middle of the ring, while Golovkin's two-handed and while Kodo's one-handed, the question is, does Golovkin have the discipline to keep his right hand home to protect himself from Kodo's left hook? In other words, Kodo's left hook is an A-plus punch. Don't get caught up on weights, right? Daniel Gill gets hit. Folks, he drops. As he's falling to the canvas, 
he looks confused. He didn't expect the punch. He's trying to figure out while he's falling to the canvas, why he's falling to the canvas. Understand, Kodo has power that resonates at middle weight. I believe the pre-fight weight, it's a sham. Right? Kodo comes in weighing less than 154. He's not 154 when the fight starts. Kodo's bigger than you think. Right? The low weight at the weigh-in seems to be a Freddie Roach, Manny Pacquiao, Miguel Cotto school of thought. Where guys are showing up a little bit lighter than you know they're going to be the day of the fight. What you need to know is that Daniel Gill is a guy who went 24 rounds with Anthony Mundine. Right? He's a guy who has fought other big hitters. He did not make it to the second half of the fight against Miguel Cotto. Right? Sergio Martinez had been hit by a lot of big hitters. I know he has a bad knee, but he was hit and hurt several times in that fight by Miguel Cotto. Cotto has power at middleweight. I believe against Golovkin, because Golovkin does better against more upright fighters, like Martin Murray, like Ashida, I believe Cotto would dance around the ring, pick his spots, then come in with left hooks. Because Cotto's timing is off rhythm, and that's a skill. It's one he's cultivated. He's able to catch guys cold. Martinez seemed to be caught cold. Daniel Gill, a very good defensive fighter. I know he looked bad here. I know he looked bad in the Golovkin fight, but he's a very good defensive fighter. Daniel Gill's hand is not in the same part of the ring as Cotto's left hook that drops him the first time. Right? Let me say this too. Figure out the angles. In the pre-fight, they showed you Miguel Cotto's father, right? Boxing is a lot of smoke and mirrors. I'm here to tell you that the man who's predominantly responsible for Miguel Cotto's fight style was not shown. He's Cotto's uncle, Evangelista Cotto. He took a left-handed Miguel Cotto, put him in an orthodox stance, and taught him how to throw that left hook up front. Taught him how to fight low. Right? Now, Cotto and his uncle, believe it or not, literally had fist fights. They split up. It was contentious. This happens in boxing. This is a sport where, right, Roy Jones Jr. had a problem with Roy Jones Sr. for a while. Floyd Mayweather Jr. had a problem with Floyd Mayweather Sr. for a while, right? Miguel Cotto had a problem with his uncle, right? The two guys had a serious beef. But understand, Cotto is inverted, right? And he's not throwing straight punches, straight power punches with that left. You see him flash a jab with that left. Freddie Roach has taught him to forget about occupying that left with a lot of jabs. Now he's fainting his way around the ring. He's coiled, ready to throw that left hook. The fact that it's up front, not back, not Manny Pacquiao straight left. Kodos is up front, means the power punch gets there faster. And because Cotto is able to jump in, Roach and him have worked on an entry point. When he jumps in, he's able to lean forward and get more ring coverage than someone like Daniel Gill thought he could. So Gill thinks he's out of range. Cotto hits him flush, drops him. Golovkin. Will he be able to handle Cotto coming in intermittently 
with that left hook. Let me say this too. Once Cotto gets in, Cotto will then open up with both hands, right? I know in boxing a punch is supposed to be a punch. I understand the theory, right? But this is not the Olympics. You and I know in real life, when a bigger guy has a shorter guy up on him, and that shorter guy is throwing a flurry, the judges are going to give the round to David. They're going to give the ground to the smaller guy. So I don't know who wins. Kodo Golovkin. Golovkin is two-handed, but Kodo fights so low that you have to ask yourself, Golovkin's power, the kind of up-top power that we saw against Martin Murray and stuff like that, how would he be able to deal with a guy fighting low? I know he took out Matthew Macklin with a body shot. I know he can throw hard punches. Let's just say Matthew Macklin, who gets stopped over by the ropes, was more in front of him than Miguel Cotto would be. So put me among those who believes that Cotto Golovkin is a toss-up fight. I don't feel that way about Cotto Saul Alvarez. I'd take Cotto in that matchup. In part because I feel Cotto is the better athlete. In other words, Cotto seems to have his balance working, where he can get in, get out, where he can fight at a faster pace than Saul Alvarez, right? I thought Alvarez had a problem against Eris Landy Lara, leaving the pocket, coming back to the pocket, leaving the pocket, Right now, while Cotto is not going to move away from the pocket as much as Arislandi Lara, he's going to dance around on the outskirts of the pocket. This is very different than James Kirkland, who kept coming right up in the pocket against Canelo. If you stand in front of Canelo, you're going to get Kirkland. Right, you're going to get treated like James Kirkland got treated. Right, but Cotto's not that guy. Cotto is a guy who's going to fight low. He's going to fight small. He has a big left hook. I don't think Saul Alvarez, who's right-handed, is going to want to keep his right hand home for most of the fight, protecting his right side. I think there's going to be a moment in the fight where Saul Alvarez, who himself, high KO ratio, is a hunter. He's going to get caught with some of Cotto's left hooks. Let me say this too. I know Saul Alvarez has one of the best left hooks in boxing. But people need to realize Cotto is not Carlos Baldemir. He's not going to be standing upright expecting to get hit. He's going to be low. I'm telling you, Cotto's ability to fight small is overlooked. So in conclusion... And I was surprised Gil gets dropped early. I thought this fight was going to go several rounds. Right? In conclusion, I'll say this. I think Cotto is a bigger force at middleweight than any of us want to admit. I think his fight style is exactly the kind of fight style that would give Gennady Golovkin problems. I believe both Cotto and Golovkin do better against bigger men. Right? I don't think the rule that a good big man beats a good little man applies to these two guys. Right? I would take Cotto outright against Saul Alvarez. Right? Let me say this too. Cotto against Golovkin, while I wouldn't take a side in that fight, I would bet that th that fight wouldn't go the distance. Because my point is, look at Cotto with Freddie Roach. Folks, the fights are ending early. Delvin Rodriguez. Right? Sergio Martinez. Now Daniel Gill. Right? Also, look at the KO ratio on Golovkin. It's higher than Kodos. You're talking about a 90% KO ratio. Right? Something would 
have to give, right? I would expect someone to win that fight by stoppage, right? As for Cotto Canelo, I'll just put it to you this way. One of the worst moments of Canelo's career came against Cotto's older brother, right? Cotto has a guy who fought Canelo. I personally don't believe Canelo has really improved on his style that much. In other words, the Canelo I'm seeing in the ring these days looks like the same Canelo that existed before. When he had problems, we've forgotten in fights, right? I thought he had a problem against Cotto's older brother, especially early in that fight. Look at the first two rounds of that fight. I thought Alfonso Gomez gave him problems, right? Understand, fighting Cotto poses a few problems. One is, how do you avoid that left hook? You don't even know if it's going to the body or the head, right? The other problem is finding Cotto. Take a close look at this Gil fight. Gil has a hard time even finding Cotto in the ring because Cotto now is out of a crouch. He's given up the fantasy he used to have where he thought of himself as a master boxer. Now he's just trying to bob and weave and set up left hooks. In other words, now he's Joe Fraser. Right? So, Cotto Golovkin, I'd bet distance in that fight, that the fight ends inside of the distance. I don't know who wins the fight. Cotto Canelo, I'd be rolling with Cotto in that fight. Obviously, Canelo, who is one of the hardest punchers in the sport, always has a puncher's chance. I'd hedged the play with Canelo by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me say this too. A Kodo fan I saw the fight with swore that Kodo's right hand was the difference in the fight. He points out that Kodo lands a good right hand after the first knockdown. My argument is that's the right hand you hit, a woozy guy. A guy who's dazed and confused from the car crash of the left hook. But if you feel Cotto has a great right hand, and if you feel there are other fights in which Cotto has shown right-handed power, leave those comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by. Peace.